Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, four sparklers in front of me, two Proseccos, a champagne and a, well, we'll get to wine number three after the first two. Uh, but the first one is uh, Prosecco, the second one's also a Prosecco, but this one is Cirotto Assolo Prosecco Superiore 2011 Vintage. Let's give it a whirl. Clean, soft, uh, juicy apple, a uh, little bit of pear in there too. Also a touch of uh, pumice-like minerality coming through when, when, when you smell it. Let's see what it comes through when you taste it. Quite rich, soft flavours, not particularly high in alcohol, 11.5%. Uh, extra dry, this one's extra dry on this one. Doesn't mean it's the driest category of Prosecco. Um, but it means that they'd be, if, if you're technical, between 12 and 17 grams of sugar. Uh, no idea why it's extra dry is not the driest, but drier than that, there is brut, there's extra brut, and then there's brut nature. Okay, uh, but uh, that is, um, I mean, it doesn't come across as a sweet wine by any means, but uh, uh, that touch of sugar is adding a little bit of richness and roundness to these apple flavours. Uh, it's funny, I notice the uh, mineral character more when I smell it than when I, when I come to taste it. Maybe that touch of sugar is slightly swamping that mineral edge. It's good, not great, but uh, let's try number two. Uh, so this is Casalina uh, Valdobbiadini, uh, so uh, upmarket bit of Prosecco, there is a bit of Valdobbiadini, Valdobbiadini called uh, Cartizze, which uh, is the uh, the highest of the high. This is maybe uh, second tier down, but is it going to be second class? Let's give it a whirl. More of the apples and pears here. Um, I don't notice as much of the mineral character, but what it does feel to have is um, almost like a briny tang about it. Um, it feels like it's maybe not going to be as... Um, in your face is the wrong word. It's maybe not as shouty as the first one, uh, but it feels like there maybe a few more layers to come out. Let's have a see. Mmm, nice. Couple of things there. Um, it feels like a richer wine, but I think it's the richness that's actually coming from the fruit in the first place, uh, grapes in the first place, rather than from uh, uh, from the, uh, the the sweetness. Uh, but um, then underpinning it all, it's really really quite a solid, chunky wine now, but reining it all in, there's a, that little bit of, uh, I, was, I was talking about the, that briny aroma. Uh, it's funny, the, the first one smells that mineral pumice edge. Here, it, it, that, that is the taste that's coming through, cleaning up the finish. Uh, maybe I would prefer both of them as um, uh, in, in brute form rather than extra dry because um, I do notice that softness and sweetness but that's precisely the reason why a lot of people will actually prefer them in this state. It's good. I'm going to have another sweet. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, wine number three. The Enigma. Um, well, it's not an Enigma. It's an English wine uh, made by a guy called Ulrich Hoffmann. Uh, I'm not sure whether he's from. Is he from Germany? I, hopefully I, I don't insult you by saying that, Ulrich. But uh, this one's actually from Sussex um, and it's uh, Pinot Noir Champagne. Sorry, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, uh, made in the Method Champenoise. Am I allowed to say Method Champenoise? I am. Uh, for some reason, the Champenoise don't like people put it's made in the same way as they make the wines in Champagne on bottles. Um, no idea why, but uh, hey. Um, anyway, let's give it a whirl. Uh, 2010 vintage. Whereabouts in Sussex does it say on here? No. RH17, wherever RH17 is. It was very pretty colour, you probably can't see against my stripy shirt. Um, salmon pink, I've heard someone call it condom colour, but that's not very polite. Um, it's, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, and smell wise, uh, it's got some of those, uh, a bit of apple tinged raspberry and uh, strawberry fruit, more on the raspberries. Um, it feels it's like it's going to be young, fresh, perky, um, and uh, let's try it. There's a slightly stewed uh, character there that I'm not so sure about. Um, uh, it feels like there's um, uh, th there's been some berry fruit, and maybe somebody has done a few adjustments that uh, at the moment are, are sitting not quite as well with the wine as they could be. It could just be that it's um, it it's early days for the wine, early days for the winery. Um, uh, I've got a feeling that, uh, that, that this wine will have been in, in, in bottle for quite a while, because when I pulled the... Uh, uh, pull the cork out. If, you, if, if the, the cork's been in very recently, it just goes and fans out. And this took quite a while to do that. Uh, but um, I'm going to come back and have another taste. Yeah, for me, it's got that slight smoky character that I get in quite a lot of English wines that uh, um, speak to me of something that maybe wasn't quite as ripe as it, it could have been in the first place. It's strange because there is this quite robust, plummy, uh, strawberry fruit syrup uh, richness 
but that smoky character, I'm... Yeah, as I say, two minds about that. It's okay uh, rather than great. Let's see whether we get greatness with wine number four, uh, which is, we are in Champagne here, with Tatanger's uh, Prestige, a Rosé, a non-vintage. Give it a whirl. And uh, slightly, slightly deeper colour. Um, and uh, uh, aroma-wise, more on the apples than the red berries. Yes, there are the red berries. Um, and uh, yes, it's, it's strange with the, with the, 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 the Hoffman and Rathbone one. Um, it smelt more raspberry and tasted more strawberry. This one smells more strawberry. Let's see whether it tastes more raspberry. And it's a more confident wine than the, uh, uh, the, the Hoffman and Rathbone, although Tattinger has been doing it for quite a lot longer. I think this is the first vintage for, for Ulrich Hoffman. Uh, but here, uh, what you've got, um, it's, uh, it's at once richer and fresher. Does that make sense? Um, the richness, uh, what I mean by the richness, I mean they, I was getting that that slightly uh, stewed richness on the uh, uh, on the Hoffman here. Uh, what I've got is um, confident ripe but not overripe fruit. So you're getting the apples and it's the uh, a bit of the green apples but also a bit of the red apples both fresh and cooked. Red berry richness, bit of toastiness coming through um, uh, but here it's that, uh, that that freshness of acidity. They seem to have been a bit afraid of the acidity in the, uh, uh, and, and have maybe have adjusted it just that a little bit too much in the uh, uh, in, in the Hoffman. But here uh, there is an elegance and precision, and uh, combine that with the richness of fruit, and uh, it's a very very tasty drink. And uh, I mean, I, I know which one I'll be uh, digging into when I've uh, uh, when I've flicked the off button on the camera. Um, the proseccos were okay, and. Uh, for me, the Hoffman, work in progress. Good first stab. Let's see how they're going to go on in future vintages. See you soon.